Okay, hey everyone. Uh, I'm gonna do another shop tour because I've got one, two, three, four cars, almost a full shop of all flathead powered traditional cars, which is kind of like the goal, what I've always wanted. And I love flathead engines, as you can probably tell. So yeah, I thought I would share this cool, cool moment with you guys. Um, first of all, before we do that, I've got, I got a clipboard because I can't remember stuff when I'm making my videos. Uh, I would like to thank Brent from Half-Ass Customs. He gave me a shout out a couple of videos ago on his and it like tripled my subscribers, which was super cool. I met Brent years ago at like maybe 12, 13 years ago at Hot Rod Hijinks in Fort Quibell, Saskatchewan. He was driving this super cool sectioned, I can't remember if it was a Chevy or a Pontiac, but it was like 49 to 52, it was sectioned, it was super low, super cool, great car. Uh, next thing on the list, T-shirts. I've got T-shirts like this, but not as faded. This is an old shirt. Uh, they're on my website. There will be a link for the website in the description. But I've got this design, which is the Roadster. Uh, I've got a really cool design done by Jacqueline Davies of my old Thunderbird, my 60 Thunderbird, done with like a super mid-century modern butterfly background. Uh, butterfly building, I should clarify. Uh, what else? I've got the... LG logo. I got men's shirts, women's shirts, black, white. Christmas is coming eventually. Somebody's birthday's coming. I don't know. Get yourself a shirt. You need a shirt. Shirts are great. Um, okay. Anyway, let's go on with this flathead tour. Let's start. So, yeah, it's a full shop, but that's because two of the cars are mine. It is raining right now. And my 47 leaks like crazy. The windshield leaks. So whenever it rains, I kind of bring it in the shop. Uh, for those that haven't watched previous videos, this is my 47 Ford two-door sedan. It is more or less my daily driver when I drive. I don't drive very often. But when I do have to go somewhere, this is the car that we usually take. I bought it in February off a good friend. Uh, it was a not running, probably like half, maybe three-quarter complete project car. So I've got a few videos of getting it on the road. It had to pass here in Canada when lots of cars have to go through an inspection before you can drive them. So I had to get it up to code to pass the inspection. But uh, yeah, basically it's got a dropped axle in the front. Uh, it's lowered three inches in the back. It's all original drivetrain still. 378 banjo rear end, three on the tree. Uh, the flathead that's in it, is a good running flathead, and because it is my daily driven vehicle, it is all stock. I'm not after power, I just want super reliable. This car runs great, I love it. A um, little more on the inside of the car. That's what I'm working on right now is the interior. The dash is all painted Ford Washington blue and Wimbledon white. Factory heater is restored down there. Uh, I just put this gauge panel in the other day. It's a cool vintage gauge panel with some old Stuart Warner gauges. This third gauge that's missing, my good friend Jeremy Mang has. I just have to go to his house and pick it up. Uh, yeah, carpet is done. Still got to put the, I got to make some sill plates for it. Uh, the bottom cushion is done. The backrests are not. They're mostly sewn up, but not, not finished yet. Rear panels are done. Door panels are not done. Kick panels are sewn up, but they need to be installed still. And the rear seat belongs to my friend Ross, who I bought the car from. He just lent it to me. I do have another rear seat for this car, but it still needs to be upholstered. So anyways, that is the 47. It's got these cool little kickstand lake pipes on it. Bought those at a swap meet a couple years ago and never had the right vehicle for them until now. These moon discs, they're kind of a cool story on those. I bought those at the Powerama swap meet when I was 16 years old. So I've had them almost 20 years now. They've been on, I think I've had them on four cars. So anyways, there's the 47. Moving along to the Roadster. Uh, I've got a really good video of this that's 
probably my most popular video on YouTube. But anyway, this is, this is my Roadster that I built. I think I started building this car when I was like 21 or 22. Uh, it has a Monarch flathead. Uh, for those that don't know what a Monarch is, Monarch was a Canadian-only car built by Ford Motor Company. And it had, it was kind of like in between a Mercury and a Lincoln. It was higher end than a Mercury, but not as big as a Lincoln. And they used basically the same engine as a Mercury. It's got the four-inch stroke. Uh, the Monarch is super cool because they had a little Lion insignia. Got a Monarch steering wheel in it as well just to keep with the, the Canadian theme. Um, yeah, this is, it's based on a late model flathead, which would be 1949 to 54, or in the US, they only used them till 53. Canada used the flathead till 54. The main way to tell a late model one is it's got the distributor up front here. Whereas on the early style ones, the distributor is way down in front you can't see anything on this video it's a terrible example um also on the late model flatheads the thermostat housing is usually at the front of the cylinder head i have early style heads on this which have them in the middle but anyways this is this engine was built by dave swenson in spokane washington uh it's bored to it's 260 cubic inch now it's got edmunds customs heads on it which were brand new NOS in the box when I got them. They were super cool. I almost didn't use them because they were still in the box, but I mean, they were made to be used. So there they are. It's got a Y-end tri-power intake, three Chrome Strombergs, Winfield SU-1A cam. The distributor that's in it is a Chevrolet distributor that's been machined to fit in the flathead. It's not what I've always run, I used to always run this Mallory MagSpark, but a couple years ago, I started having some ignition gremlins and trying to diagnose that. I replaced the distributor with the Chevrolet one. It did not fix the issue. It ended up just being a really bad ground, but I've never got around to putting the MagSpark back in. One day, maybe. That same day, I'll probably put, I've had this fixed in PM7 intake for years now that's supposed to go on the roadster, but hasn't happened yet. Hopefully one day. Uh, anyways, let's move on. This is Jack Lindquist's 49 Ford. I just finished up a bunch of stuff on this car today. Uh, it has, do, 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 it's got a late model flathead in it. This is what I was talking about with the thermostat being at the front. So it's got Edelbrock heads, Edelbrock intake, Holly 94 carburetors. I believe it has the same Chevrolet distributor that my car has. There's a guy here in Victoria that makes them, so kind of makes sense that that's what it would have. But yeah, this is a great little car. Jack's had it for a couple years now. I've worked on it off and on for him. Uh, Jack used to have a really cool 39 Ford that unfortunately was in an accident a couple years ago. Somebody rear-ended him and then pushed him into another car. So it was written off, and then he bought this car with the insurance money. Um, over the couple of years that he's had it, I did the most of the interior for him. The door panels I did not do, but I did all the carpet, redid all the seats, nothing fancy, just pleats. Factory-style headliner I put in. Uh, I have also done a transmission swap in it and just finished up a dual reservoir master cylinder conversion. So Jack will probably come pick this car up tomorrow. But it's always, always a treat working on Jack's cars. And the fourth one in the shop. This is a super cool 32 Ford pickup. I'm not exactly sure when it was built but it's got all the right pieces for like an old time hot rod. It's got an original stretch dropped axle in it, early Ford brakes, 39 Ford transmission in it, which happens to be the reason it's in here. I'm doing a clutch on it. The throw out bearing on this one is very angry. 
It's also got a Columbia two-speed rear end in it, which is really great. Here's the engines just sitting over here on these early Fords when you got to do the clutch. It's usually easiest just to pull the engine right out, especially with a torque tube drive line that's all closed in. But anyway, it's got Offenhauser heads on it, just a stock intake. I don't know what this little alternator dealio is, but it's pretty tiny. Fits in the original generator case or generator bracket. I bet you could fit that in a generator case if you were crafty enough. But anyways, once the clutch comes in for this, it will go back together. Here's one thing I love about working on trucks is you have a shelf that you can just put everything in. There's the old clutch there. And one last thing, check my clipboard. Yeah, this guy. So my friend Richard, he built this jig a couple years ago to do dropped axles. Isn't that awesome? He no longer has a place to store it, so he's letting me store it with the, the idea that I can use it. Basically, it's got a spindle welded on here. Put your kingpin in to hold it. This guy goes through there, and then you heat this nice and hot and use the bottle jack to stretch it. Over here, you got one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch. So can't wait to use that. I'm actually, my acetylene, oxyacetylene kit is empty right now. So tomorrow I'm gonna go get that refilled. Also, I don't know how many paid attention in my last shop video, but I was building a front engine dragster. And then when I, that front engine dragster was done, I was gonna start on this Roadster pickup. Well, the dragster left a couple weeks ago and I have in fact, Started on the Roadster pickup. Got a little bit of metal work done on it. Over here, next to, this is Shannon's Comet shelf, but next to her shelf, I've got some frame rails that I whipped up for the Roadster pickup. And because the Roadster pickup is on a super budget, it's a tight budget build, this tubing that I built the frame rails from are actually left over from the, the table that I built the dragster on. So that's why there's a couple of weld marks here and grind marks that's from accessories and brackets that were welded to it when I was building the dragster chassis. So that got repurposed and recycled to keep this thing super low dollar. Anyways, that is, that's about all that's happening here. Once again, please, Go check out the, the website, get yourself a t-shirt, get your wife a t-shirt, your girlfriend, your mistress, get everybody a t-shirt. T-shirts are great. We'll talk to you guys later.